Hello everyone, my name is Saurav Chala, and I'm an audio scientist, researcher, and student studying at the Center for Computer Research in Music and Acoustics at Stanford University. And in today's video, I'm going to be providing an analysis of the 7 Hertz, Divine, and Diablo by Chronicle, and whether or not you should buy them. I took some notes on Chronicle's video on the 7 Hertz, Divine, and Diablo, and the first thing that came to mind was when he talked about the population average diffuse field have related transfer function JM1 measured on the 5128 with some filter adjustments being the latest research on how flat speakers are supposed to sound. Don't let this fool you because there actually was no research done by these people to figure out if this is actually how flat speakers should sound. In blind listening tests, historically flat speakers have been perceived as the best sounding across all different types of speaker frequency responses. We tested preference for JM1 with a minus 10 dB tilt, which is pretty common for the filters used for the straight curve, as well as IEF preference 2025, which is Critical's latest preference IEM target curve. And we found that these target curves performed the worst out of the six target curves tested in the in-ear headphone listening tests. They have over 75% loss rates to the HIFA endgame and PEC DB IE target. And we replaced the PEC DB IE target with the PEC DB Hi Fi target and found that the PEC DB Hi Fi target was winning slightly more against the Hi Fi endgame target. And to no one's surprise, it's beating targets like the Harman Method Adjustment 2025 developed on the BNK5128. And any target curve critical or someone else provides that are complying to the JM1 you know, diffuse field tilt, that kind of thing, are just going to get steamrolled by the PEC dB hi-fi target because of the issues in the BNK5128 as far as low frequency resonances showing up where they should not, and there not being any systematic preference research behind these target curves people like Critical are claiming are the best. The next thing Critical talks about is the state of the planar IEM driver market and how most manufacturers are all using the same driver developed by 7 Hertz or some other Chinese company. You even have examples like 64 Audio charging over $1,000 for the same driver. And I thought this was a bit misleading because there is unique technology in the 64 Audio Solo, which goes beyond the scope of the driver. And this actually somewhat makes it more justified for the cost. For example, one of the things 64 Audio utilizes in their IEMs is the Apex Core technology. With traditional IEMs, if you put them in, you will get something known as the occlusion effect where your voice sounds like it's reverberating inside your head. And for this reason, the IEMs just don't sound open at all. When you go to something like these Samsung earbuds, which don't actually block your ear, they don't have this issue and it just sounds like the sound is coming from space and the bass sounds ridiculous for this reason because your brain maybe is not assuming your voice to reverberate inside. But there are specific technical performance aspects of an IEM beyond just the driver that they are using. And 64 Audio is also using two Helmholtz resonators to tune the response to get rid of a peak around 8 kilohertz and a dip around 11 kilohertz, but I'm sure the 64 audio solo also has its issues, but regardless, um, just using some off the shelf drivers doesn't really matter. These $8 Samsung earbuds have better drivers than anything in Critical's IEMs or any IEMs on the market for that matter. Critical talks about his new IEM having 14.5 millimeter drivers. These $8 Samsung earbuds have a combined driver size of 19 millimeters with its 11 millimeter coaxial woofer and eight millimeter tweeter configuration. 64 Audio's Apex Core technology on the Solo supposedly gets rid of pressure from this copper mesh faceplate, which seems really interesting. I'm actually curious to hear how this IM sounds considering its extension to 20 kilohertz. But yeah, let's talk about the seven hertz Diablo and Divine. So when looking at the 
magnitude response measurements of the 7 Hz Diablo and Divine versus the Samsung EO IA500, we can see that the Samsung earbuds have way better treble extension. There's no dip from 4 kHz to 8 kHz, which is going to take away detail and naturalism. And then after 8 kHz, there's a massive dip until around 11 kHz, which again is going to completely kill detail. Then after that, there's a huge dip and roll off in the upper treble end. Um, this is just not going to sound good. And the treble performance of these Samsung Buds is already in line with what our data says is accurate. So all you need to do is shape the low frequency response to match the PEC-TB hi-fi target. And this is literally the end game audio you can get. 19 millimeter total driver size versus the 14.5 millimeter total driver size on the Diablo and Divine. Also having a device like this, as I mentioned in my previous video, an IEC 60318-4 occluded ear simulator can be used to measure the responses of your individual units. You can get perfect channel matching and this is the expert solution. Getting the best drivers on the market, doing the calibration yourself and getting perfect audio. You don't need Critical's IEM that probably has occlusion effect and it's gonna sound closed off and your voice is gonna reverberate inside your head. And I mean, the Samsung Buds really opened my eyes to what good sound is, especially for IEMs. Um, you put them in, you don't get the same isolation as you do with um, regular IEMs, but you have no occlusion effect basically. I mean, there's some occlusion effect still. It's not like you're not having anything in your ears at all, but um, you know, technology is being developed to further these elements and nothing in Critical's IEMs or anything special. Um, these $8 Samsung earbuds are going to be much better. You can get the Clone IEC 711 coupler on AliExpress for $100 with these Samsung earbuds and have spent less money than you did on either the Diablo or Divine. And you also get the measurement device out of it, which you can use for any in-ear headphones in the future. And you also learn how to be good at audio. So that's my solution. Don't buy the 7 Hertz Synchronical Diablo and Divine. Buy these $8 Samsung EO IA500 earphones. They're also called the Samsung Tune by AKG. Anything that looks like this is gonna be the same thing basically, unless it's a fake. And yeah, I mean, this is the expert solution. There's no IM right now, which has better treble quality than this. The 64 Audio Solo might have better treble extension. Um, I'm not sure I'd love to test it out, but um, yeah, for now, these are the expert pick. The 7 Hertz and Critical Diablo have terrible treble quality, lacking detail, completely rolled off in the highs, and these $8 earbuds are wiping them out of the park.